features for Course Builder version 1.40 and 1.41. Uh, vi this video will not cover any new features relative to the documentation, so you can always refer to the documentation for a full treatment uh, of these features. So for Course Builder version 1.4, you're going to have to upgrade your Google App Engine SDK to version 1.77. Previously, we asked you to use uh, version 1.70. In the admin pages, now you can do uh, two extra things. One of them is to aggregate all your counters, and uh, this is uh, actually off by default. The other one is to record uh, your student uh, activities, and this is also off by default. Now also for your announcements, your course announcements, you can actually, after you, you create a new announcement or edit an existing one, you have the option to actually uh, email uh, your group. So with that, send email checkbox there. Now let's go to the uh, dashboard. Now when you're creating a new lesson or uh, editing uh, a current lesson body, you can uh, actually create components um, really quickly through the rich text editor. I won't go to this uh, feature in detail because there's a separate video uh, specifically just for this, and the link to that is both in the documentation and uh, below this video. So really quickly, we go to Rich Text Editor, we hit the uh, toolbox, and you'll see options of which components uh, you can actually use. We can see activities, Google Docs, YouTube videos, uh, Google Groups as well, and so forth. Now in the dashboard, uh, this tab has been renamed to Analytics. It used to be called Students but you can still see that the analytics tab shows the analytics for, um, for the students and there's a new section for pre peer review which I'll go into later and again which has its own dedicated video. We've also added this footer text powered by Course Builder and you can definitely delete it. You're not obligated to uh, keep it and if you want to know how to delete it, go to the documentation under Modify Course Templates. And it's uh, very simple. You just uh, delete some text in uh, two, two separate files. We've also added the ability to actually give assigned points to your assessments and actually weight um, your assessment scores as well. So I'll go to this assessment that's pre-made and go to this particular question. We see now a weight specification and that basically means this particular question is worth five points. So weight is always specified in integers and if no weight is specified uh, it defaults to one. We also for multiple choice questions we see this choice scores array. And this choice scores array links up with choices. And so it's basically weighting uh, each of these answers. So if someone chooses um, the first um, choice, a, this one right here, they'll get 0.2 times 5. If someone chooses the correct answer, which is the third one here, they'll get, we've specified they'll get full credit, so 1.0 times 5. As mentioned earlier, uh, we now have a peer review. And if you go to the home page, you'll see um, peer review here. I won't go into this uh, in detail because there's a separate uh, thorough video on this. And the link to that is both in the documentation and below this video. For ETL, um, again, that's extract, transform, load. Um, you're going to have to now specifically, explicitly state this archive path option. Um, and then in this, in this example, it says to uh, put the uh, course data into this zip file called EG course in the current directory. Also, starting from uh, Course Builder version 1.4, you can now have to uh, update your index every time you update a Course Builder version. So if you're going for, for example, 1.31 to 1.4 or 1.40 to 1.41. 
So go to your course builder root directory, use the app config command, update indexes, and of course the period indicates the current directory. And also course builder now um, by default connects through HTTPS uh, and not HTTP the, for security. That's it. And uh, please uh, visit the Course Builder homepage for all the latest information. Thank you.